everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lizzie. I hope you're doing well. I wore my Virgo shirt because one, I am a Virgo, and two, it is our birthday season. I love you, Virgs, out there. I'm also part Leo. I'm a Virgo Leo cusper, so happy belated to all the Leos because you're me too. <laughs> so, but it's Virgo time and I'm honoring you. So if your birthday already passed like me, mine was on the 25th. I think I'm the first day of Virgo. I don't really know. Because I know, actually, is it the 23rd? I gotta look it up. I know the last day for Cuspers, Leo Virgo Cusper, is my day. I'm pretty sure Virgo starts on the 23rd, but don't quote me on it. <laughs> Virgos, they like to be correct, and if I'm not 100%, I don't, I don't put my fucking name on it. You feel me, Virgos? You feel me? <laughs> um, anyway, so... If you already had a birthday, happy belated for a ghost. Um, I've been packing birthday stuff all week at work because I work for Amazon. And I'm like, happy birthday for a ghost. Happy birthday for a ghost. And I send it down because, you know, we hold it down for each other. Virgos, out of all of the signs, you know, I show you love because I am a Virgo. But I'm just glad I am a Virgo because of the loyalty Virgos have. Like, it's... Like, I'm not tooting my own horn here. I'm talking to you, Virgos. It's really good for, like, a friends group, a family group, a classroom, an office to have a Virgo. They remember everybody's birthday. They remember all the important shit. They take notes. Like, uh, what was the detail? What was the color of that dress we needed? It'll be Virgo. It was champagne. I wrote it down in my log that day like I keep notes in my diary about the day sometimes and if somebody needs to remember what day something happened I can go back to my journal and be like it happened on this day because I'm a fucking Virgo we know some shit <laughs> anyway I just wanted to give you some love because it's your birthday if it hasn't happened yet happy birthday if it's your birthday today whoop, whoop, it's your day happy birthday Virgo <laughs> yay it's your birthday I hope it's good also it's fucking fall because my face is running. Shout out to Barbie though. I bought this because I am, I have not seen the new movie, but when I saw Margot uh, was gonna be Barbie, I'm like, that's perfect. Like, she looks like Barbie. Like, finally, they get it right. And they're like always trying to sh like switch shit up, which I'm not against, but at the same time, these are beloved characters. Like, I grew up playing with Barbie. My generation is hyped for this movie because we played with Barbies. Like, these kids play with Barbies, but they didn't play like Barbies. Like, we fucking... That's, like, all we had, okay? We didn't have no fucking YouTube, fucking, you know, Hulu, Netflix. You know, we had to entertain our goddamn selves. So, I thought it was fantastic. And I, I love Ryan Gosling. He's a dancer, support, I support my dancers, hardcore. I used to have a crush on him, but I like his wife, so I just can't, because I feel wrong, because I'm a Virgo. <laughs> also a Virgo dream, but oh, you're married, so even if you're totally hot, I'm not going to look at you anymore, because that's rude. <laughs> Virgo tree. Loyalty is what I'm getting at. But I am excited to see the movie. I've heard great things about it, and because I played with Barbies, I was like, I'm seeing this movie. Like, I was the weirdo. I was like, oh, Ken, you look so handsome today. Hello, Barbie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going. God damn it. But I heard that it's not what you expect. Like, I don't really know what I expect. Like, are they getting sucked into, like, a Barbie dream house? I don't know. But it's going to be better than I expected. That's all I heard. So I'm like really excited. So shout out to Margo because it's really fucking hard to be all of us girls. It's like, you know, Barbie's a big role to fill. Like I feel like a lot of women either loved her or like ripped her apart. And I am a supporter of women. One, she, her, you look amazing. Like you had to have a killer bod to play Barbie, which is fucking wrong. I would have loved, you know, for to have some curvy Barbies playing up, growing up. And I think they're getting better at that. But, you know, she works hard to look that good. Like, I think we as women are always like, oh, it must be so easy. No, bitch. I, I bet you she wants a cheeseburger. I bet you she does. And she can't. But she looks like that. That's what it takes. You can't eat cheeseburgers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sounds like, good job, Margo. You look like Barbie. 
played Barbie and in the clips she seems like she acts like I, I, you can't go wrong with Margot you know <laughs> I just like her range is crazy like she played Harley Quinn right that's the same girl right am I crazy and then Barbie that's amazing talent I am boosting up women this month I don't care Ryan looks awesome as Ken too let's not be sexist like <laughs> I just laugh when I see him. I can't help it. Like, can you imagine his wife like coming home looking like a wax doll? Like, oh my god, that's scary. <laughs> I'd be like poking him, like you look like one of them wax figures, <laughs> Madame Tussauds. <laughs> funny, funny times. But anyway, let's get into reading. I'm gonna start with some numerology. Um, but first, I need a drink. Why do I always forget my damn drink collective? Jesus, I need a shirt. Where's my drink? But then people are going to think I'm an alcoholic. And really, I just mean like a drink. <laughs> okay, let's get into Dice Amy. Thank you for these dice. And I am hanging up the dream catcher, but I think it's going to go better with my fall stuff. And I'm about to switch over my fall crap. I love fall. It's not crap to me. But I'm changing it all over at the end of this weekend. Labor Day is like what Monday, so I'll probably wait till like Friday, uh, my next day out. Well, who knows? I'm starting a new job. When I switch over to fall, the dream catcher is going up because it just matches better. I did not forget, Amy. <laughs> I'm like, mm, this is a fall vibe. <laughs> All right, we have ooh two fives. So change coming, or change already started and you're still in the process. I heard somebody's turning 55, so happy birthday, Virgo, 55? That's going to be a really life-changing year. That's double fives. Anytime you're like 33, 44, 22, 11, you know, those are big years. Double digits, same digits, big, they should be, they should be big birthdays like 50, you know, just because of those tend to be like life-changing moments good bad and different they happen because of the numbers <laughs> we have three 12 which is also a three so technically two threes we have a six that talks about after change Ooh, you got two sixes wow a lot of synchronicities and a ten ten talks about completion <sighs> I don't know why I, for this 12, I'm hearing team player. Um, you could be at odds having some miscommunication with it not coming out with two threes instead of three, one, two. It could be an area code. I heard random shit I'm getting with these dice, but double fives, double six is like either change, gonna, change is going to progress really quickly or you're going to change something. Then you're going to have like a pause of normalcy and then another thing's going to change. Like you're going to have two big changes back to back, but with five, five, six, six, it's going to smooth. Like it might be chaotic for a day or a week, but it's going to level out because we have 10. You're completing something. You're completing a cycle, getting out of a relationship, starting a new job, like the end of something into something else, which is also chaotic. That could be happening twice. Um, you might like I said, be miscommunicating and not being on the same page with the spouse, with your kids, with people at work. It is retrograde, Mercury retrograde, so there's a lot of like computer issues, there's a lot of miscommunications, a lot of fights, a lot of people returning to your life that you may not necessarily want there. Um, it's like spirit, in retrograde, we're being tested and change happens. Tower moments, good or bad, Retrograde is a time of reflection, learning what you need to do, and starting a new cycle. So it's a bit rough for everybody, but mis miscommunication, th throat chakra issues, here we go, are prevalent during Mercury retrograde, as well as like glitches on your phone, getting viruses, so be careful of like any opening any emails or anything like that. Like trying to send stuff or upload stuff might be causing you a problem. That's all prevalent to Mercury retrograde. When things are in Mercury, again, Virgo, we are ruled by Mercury. So you are, and this is your season. So I feel like 
Virgos, Mercury is putting you on the right road and they're doing it rather bluntly because this technically is like your new year. You're starting a new year, a new age, and they need you on a new cycle. So there's a lot of like, whoosh, it's your birthday. You're going this way now. And it's all to do with spirit and we have very little control. So sometimes it can be a bit bumpy. So let's get into it and see what's going on, shall we? All right, since it's Rainbow Day, I focus more on love. Rainbow Day to me is uh, embracing LGBTQ. Sometimes I do individual readings. I'm kind of gearing towards um, just being all-inclusive because I don't like um, the direction this world is going. It's just another way to create divides with transgender. Everybody's fighting about transgender now. A couple years ago, it was about race. It's just, they just continue to perpetuate reasons to divide people. So for right now, all my love readings or readings in general, they include every single kind of love relationship, kind of person. I do not discriminate. I do not isolate. I validate. You are all important to me. You all matter. You choose who you love and you choose how you want to live and you come to my table as you are. As that book says, come as you are. You are welcome here. Point blank period. So let's get into it with some songs. I will say I am a bit upset. I 100% support the transgender community. I really feel like if that's the decision you want to make, you should have that right. But every child should be protected until the age of 18. Point blank period. Only for the exact fact is they do not understand the choices they are making fully. They change their mind quicker than any other age, and they need time for their bodies to finish growing. You cannot do a major operation if somebody's body is not done being developed. You are going to do severe damage. You're doing a sex change on 16-year-olds. You're a fucking problem, and I'm coming for you. I'm an earth angel. Stop touching those kids. Stop manipulating those kids. I'm not saying don't support those kids. If your kid wants to be transgender, support it. But they will be the gender they are without hormone therapy until the age of 18. For the fact is, their anatomy needs to finish before it can be changed safely. Any doctor that touches your kid before the age of 18 should not have a fucking license, period. There is a problem with what they're doing to your children in these surgeries. And you're going to find out it about it a decade down the road. They are doing disgusting, horrible fucking things while your kids are under the knife. I'm a psychic. I can't prove it. But in 10 years time, some kids are going to have some really horrific memories. And it's going to be disgusting. And they're going to be traumatized. What the fucking medical professionals, instead of saying I should be a child and get time to finish growing... They gave me hormones. They pushed the initiative. They pushed the idea of me wanting to be a different gender. That is 100% fact. They are pushing it. It should not be in your school district at all. I support God. I support LGBTQ. You should not talk about God in, in school. And you should not talk about fucking sex changes in school. Because it's inclusive of everybody. Every religion belongs in that house of school. And they all should be honored by not discussing anyone's religion so that everybody feels welcome. That is the point of separation of state and religion so that everybody can be conclusive and it's fair. You do not talk about sex or like period stuff until a certain age. Why? Because of emotional maturity. Because they're not ready for it. They're not ready for transgender. It's a fucking problem. Get on this shit now. These kids are hurting. I'm here for kids. I will fuck you up. I'm done. And uh, granted, that rant. People who have had sex operations, I support. They had these operations. They are literally and utterly disgusted that 16-year-olds are on hormones. 
that their bodies are being fucked with. They're like, okay, we will teach them everything they need to know. We will support them. We will help them help them dress that way. But they need to let their bodies develop. I got fucked up because I didn't let my body develop. I was taking hormones under the table because back in my day, my people had to hide. So they didn't have information. They didn't understand what these hormones were doing. So they understand fully what these kids are being set up for. And they're dumbfounded that the fucking medical professionals are literally handing over hormones to little kids who just started puberty. What the fuck? You're hurting children. And it's nothing to do with religion. It's nothing to do with what anybody thinks. It's about anatomy. It's about the structure of a human body. Men don't physically stop growing till the age of 22. Women normally stop maturing and growing much at 19. So tell me why, under the age of 18, while you get to modify their fucking bodies that aren't finished modifying themselves, how are you a medical professional? How is that logistically correct to recommend that? Would you put a cancer patient in a room with somebody who had a, like, a viral infection when you know that the chemo knocks out their immune system and just by sitting in the room, it's going to give them that virus, which is going to kill them? By taking a child who is not done developing and fucking with their body, it's like taking someone on chemo who has no fucking immune system and putting them in the ward with the flu with an influenza outbreak and saying, here, die. Like, you're going to get this virus. Like, you'll be fine. You know, you might have some sweats. You know, you might throw up a little, but maybe you'll live. Maybe you won't. Maybe it'll smooth out. Maybe you'll move past it. Maybe the cancer will get you. We don't know. <laughs> Blows my fucking mind. I'm sorry, that rant came out. I'm leaving it. Fuck this society. I'm done when you start fucking with kids. And all this sex trafficking, um, I don't see any, f well, no, let me, they do take adults, mostly adult women, but 90% of the sex trafficking are all fucking children sold by our governments with an S. The United States, Canada, Mexico, Europe, Asia, all you motherfuckers do it. It's coming. You're done. You fuck with our children, you are done. That's why I'm here. Wait, just wait. When I get my go, when I can just be free to be my fucking self, you're coming. You're who I'm coming for first. Sex trafficking, sex operation doctors, nurses, psychologists, you are fucked. There's a million earth angels just like this waiting for the go light. All you fake racism criers, all you set up to divide nation providers, I'm coming for you. Secret services set up by our own government that breaks our own constitution, I'm coming for you. I don't need to prove it, because when, when I get my green light, there ain't much time on this earth for anybody. So, we got Justin Bieber and Tensions. I need a minute. I'm fucking pissed about these poor little kids. Ugh, I'm so sorry. Sam Smith, I'm not the only one. So this is definitely a love reading, but I'm just gonna, one more thing, because I fucking hate politics, but this election coming up is vital to what happens if I, I get activated or if I just live the rest of my life like a human being like the rest of you. Pay the fuck attention. We got serious problems. I don't want to hear about fucking bullshit during this election. Look at the bigger fucking picture. Turn off the motherfucking news because all they're going to do is elude you.
Look here while I'm doing this. Look here while I'm doing this. They're already doing it. They've been doing it our whole lives. But trust me, they got big fucking monsters to hide. Age of exposure. Pay the fuck attention. None of these fuckers deserve that seat. I swear to God. Please. Please do not fucking vote for anybody. I wish the whole fucking country would sit down and go like this. And say we don't want your fucking corrupted. Pick from this corrupted party group. Fuck Democrats. Fuck Republicans. Fuck the whatever party. Fuck this whole fucking system. You corrupt fucking pieces of shit. This is who I want. Elect your own. Had nothing to do with money. No fucking influence already in there. Their family hasn't been in there. They don't know no fucking buddy in there. That's who it should be president. Untouchable. Uncorruptible. Nobody knows shit about them. They ain't got a fucking skeleton in their goddamn closet. Where is that person? This fucking country needs you. Get your ass up there. I will fucking work for you for free. <sighs> Okay, I love you. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like spirit. I did not. I just set out to do a reading, and spirit's like, "Nope, I'm turning on your sack mat. Go." So sorry. What other day to do it but Rainbow Day? You know, my LGBTQ community. We like fucking need you. I'm not, we're not saying don't help these kids, but let them grow up first. Fuck. Bruno Mars and Cardi B finesse. Can't breathe. They're fucking attacking me because I talked about the government. Every time we talk about the government and get weird glitches. Oh yeah, that's normal. <sighs> well, still no bullet in the brain, so I guess I'm not saying anything about the parts. <laughs> the last one you got is Usher, you got it bad. Don't forget to pray for all the fire victims out there. Hula moves, by the way, if you haven't seen her already. I've been blowing my nose a lot. That's why I keep pausing. Okay. I thought I was going to do another one. We're just confirming. That's it. So, Justin Bieber, Intentions. Think about the song. I'll just read a few lines. Picture perfect, you don't need no filter. Gorgeous, make them drop dead, you're a killer. Shower you with all my attention. Yeah, these are my only intentions. Somebody wants to come in and shower you with love. They want to show you how they feel, not just tell you. And they have good intentions. Sam Smith, I'm not the only one. You say I'm crazy because you don't think I know what you've done. But when you call me baby, I know I'm not the only one. You've been so unavailable. Now sadly, I know why. Your heart is unobtainable. Even though Lord knows you kept mine. So this person could have found out you had another side piece. So there could be, that could be the miscommunication. Bruno Mars and Cardi B, finesse. When I'm walking with you, I watch the whole room change. Baby, baby, that's what you do. <laughs> I like that song. No, my baby don't play. Blame it on my confidence. Oh, blame it on your measurements. So they like how you look as a couple. They like that they, this person, if they're not with you to get attention, but they love the fact that everyone's like, wow, you're with that person. So they, they're they saying that you're attractive, um, but you're not just arm candy. Um, they get attention because of you, <laughs> and they're okay with it. And then we have Usher, you got it bad. When you feel it in your body, you found somebody who makes you change your ways, like hanging with your crew, said you act like you're ready, but you don't really know, and everything in your past, you want to let it go. I've been there, done it, fucked around. This says humped around. After that, this is what I found. Nobody wants to be alone. If you're touched by the words of the song, then maybe you got a bad. So this person is realizing I'm not getting any younger. Like, I don't want to hang out with these people. I'm hearing, I'm at a party. I don't want to be at with Justin Bieber again. And Ed Sheeran. But it's like, 
exactly fitting with this, so it makes sense. Like, they're with the crowd they don't want to be with. Like, they're fuck partners that they used to just, like, hang out and have sex with. It's not doing it for them anymore. They want the real deal. They want the real package with you, Collective. But I think they're upset. Either you have someone or maybe they were caught with someone. And you're like, motherfucker, I, I'm not... I'm second to nobody, bitch, okay? <laughs> That's somebody's advice. Oh, boy. Let's get in some advice for you, the viewer, from Spirit before we dig into this love situation. Sorry, let me not shake the camera with my knees. You are on my ottoman, by the way, not a table. So it's like a, a couch. Just wanted to give you a different view to look at. <laughs> Feel and release. Release all you've accumulated on this journey. I know why I went off. I forgot it's the blue moon. Like, I thought I should just not be outside or in public under full moon sometimes. Release all your accumulate. Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm like trying to get into the zone here. I'm mostly focused on this. It's like seeing the light all this darkness and this big beam of light you might be having an emotional like <clears throat> like I just said but I fucking like I've been holding in that f for weeks because I've just been listening to everybody's sides or maybe this you just been listening to everyone's bullshit or you just been going in your own mind and it's like I, just, I gotta get this out and figure out what the fuck I want and what I'm okay with um, you might be expressing feelings to someone Why is it? Also, to me, this is like spirit. You have a lot of fears regarding this connection. Um, acknowledge it. Sit in it. Are you afraid to be rejected? Are you afraid to be cheated on? Why? Is it because of past relationships? Are you not noticing red flags? Like, sit a minute. Figure out what you're concerned about and release it either through talking to someone or writing or just going for a run but giving yourself that opportunity to face what really is bothering you you're gonna see the truth in something hello lunis how are you my love don't spill my drink okay i brought out the big guns little baby mountain Dew. I guess I'm only one card. <laughs> Moving on. Let's get... <sighs> Some feelings. We'll go to feelings. Let's see how you're feeling about this person. <laughs> Glowing up pops. Maybe they're looking good. We'll see if it comes out. How are you feeling about this person or the situation? Crash course. Oof. It all fell apart for you. Either you found out they had someone or it's going to take a lot of changes to bring this together. Take a step back. You're evaluating. You don't really know exactly what to do. Big headed ego. Either this person's ego turned you off or your ego is getting in the way. Carving a path. So you're, you're, you could have a karmic with a giant ego, like, you'll never, you're like, you're leaving me? Like, you're never going to have this. I don't know why I'm feeling this. So the crash course could be like, I need to get the fuck away from this karmic, but they're being a dick. <laughs> so carving a path could be, I'm cleaning out my life, getting my ducks in a row, or the crash course happened egos got in the way words were said and you both went in your own own way the tower so <laughs> if i could oh my god there you go so this could be currently happening or it did happen for you the clap back there were angry words i'm not really sure if this is like so many makeup whether it's losing them maybe you feel like you're losing them because of a blunder or Something big bad happens here. 
So you feel like you're losing this person either because of words you said, maybe you acted in ego and the clap back and you didn't know all the information, that could be the miscommunication, or um, you're getting out of a karmic situation that's very, very messy and hostile and it could cause uh, issues between this love thing that you got going. Anything else I need to know about how you feel about this person? You could think they're out here just uh, focusing on career and not you. They could have left you or you found out there's other options. I'm getting a few things. Snake charmer. You think this person is a bullshitter. You're focusing too much on collecting your coins. You're becoming a bit of a Scrooge. Don't end up alone in life. There's that energy of I don't want to be alone. I think you've been focused on career and money. Uh, maybe you didn't think love was real or you had like really shitty love situations. So you're like, fuck love. I'm just going to do work. And then this person came in and you fell for them. And you've just kind of been put, pushing them away because you don't want love. You, you got burned. Could be that energy. Let's see how your person is feeling about you. <laughs> okay control issues um you're not letting go or you're very pushy and demanding i don't want my fears to stop me anymore okay this person might be acknowledging that they are controlling how this all plays out maybe they aren't letting things happen naturally doing the healing work this person um is i feel like working on themselves if they were the ones that fucked up here they're really doing what they can to um get out of their head this person needs control but they're not control i don't feel like this person is controlling i think they had a lot of chaos in their life and their way of handling it is just micromanaging their life smile and send hope they're hoping for the best here they're hoping that you see that there is no bad blood on their end but there is, with the smile and send hope, uh, acknowledgement that you guys are not speaking. Try harder. If they're trying to show you their feelings. They might want to uh, uh, show it instead of say it. Walk of shame. They could be uh, facing something r rather difficult. Maybe they did something that they're remorseful of here. Or they could be watching you trying to like send you the like it's all right you know what i mean it could be you can still be a good parent and still be a dedicated career person it's all about the balance finding for finding what works for you and your kids so this person could be trying to manage career and being a single mom and struggling a little bit maybe they feel like they're failing their kids or they feel like they failed their marriage because they're they were too focused on you know making money and and providing that they kind of let their uh partner fall in love with someone else because i kind of feel like this person got cheated on they had a tower moment i feel like this person is very solid like they get into something and they hold on to it they have this control and, and they don't like to get out of their comfort zone very very virgo energy here but it's like i think they're recognizing the walk of shame is they put all their eggs in one basket too many times in their life and they don't want to just rush in because they love you and because you're comfortable. They don't want to just get sucked into something again. So I really feel like they're trying to take it slow and they're not trying to put their eggs in one basket and they're focusing on being a parent more than being a lover um, and being a parent more than being an employee. Maybe if they don't have kids, they could be focusing on preparing their life so that they can have kids. And they're trying to figure out, like, how it's all going to work. If you have kids and they don't, they could be acknowledging that they're going to have to make room to be a step-parent or to help you in some way. No communication. Yeah, you guys are not talking. They're doing their thing. You're doing yours. Luck is turning in your favor. Take some chances and see what comes your way. Luck for the career and life. They might be meeting someone new here or there's a turn in your situation. Encore. So you are going to get a second chance here. They want one at least. Not being loved. This was a big issue that they don't feel like you're going to pick them. They don't feel like you love them at all. They might feel like this is one-sided. 
Everything will work itself out. All you can do is pray and keep doing what you're doing here. Yeah. They've given up the control. They they wanted this so hard and so much that it took control of their life. Um, and they had to take that walk of shame was like, uh, I'm, I'm becoming a little obsessed. I'm getting sucked down a rabbit hole and I'm losing myself. So they did the pullback here. And they're like, you know what? If this person is meant to come in my life, they will come in my life. But I'm just going to keep doing me. And they're doing the work. It's a positive stuff. Living on a prayer. They're trying to manifest a better life. I think they're trying to manifest this still. Pamper party, but they're hurt. They're trying to, they're trying to, I'm not necessarily sold that you hurt them. They're just overcoming a healing. The, and I feel this on both sides. I'm not sure if you hurt each other or if you're just coming from relationships that were really shitty. Change your attitude. This person was very negative about love, about the whole situation, and they are changing their mind. They're like, you know what? I can't carry the past into the future. What somebody else did to me in the past doesn't mean everyone's going to do that to me. They're really healing that part of their mind, which is great. See beyond the drama and chaos. So if there's a lot of shit going on, they're really trying to understand Understand your side of it their side of it they're not listening to bullshit they're not listening to drama I feel like this person's really trying to figure out stuff for themselves which is good you want you want them to have their own feelings on the matter let's see what's going on in your person's life at this time or um, maybe what could have happened here we have your life is a canvas artist manifestation create Creative accountability. This person is very creative. I think they're expressing their feelings through you in a creative way. Or they're working on their career. Some kind of creative career. Remember, soul plan. The faded life versus the destiny life. They know that they are the creator of the life they want. This person wants love. They want a family. And they want it with you. But they're open and accepting of it coming in another form. They're remembering that. Although they got sucked into you and wanting something with you, the overall picture is I want a family, I want children, I want a career I love. So they're just checking those boxes off. They're hoping to check those boxes off with you, but they're not putting their eggs in one basket. Big picture thinking. Yeah, they're looking at the big picture. What will be will be. If this is so complicated, if this is so hard, is it meant to be? If they're not ready right now, I'm not willing to you know put my destiny on hold for this person anymore this person has the green light they're walking with spirit they're very much on this fool's journey they would love to see you they would love to reconnect they would love to get this off the ground but they aren't going to be devastated curl in a ball if you never come back i think they've in their mind already presented the self with i need to move on here let's see where you are in this connection Activated earth, power places, ley lines, trust where you're led. You are feeling so spiritually connected. You are so, like, drawn to this person like a, a, a fly to... <laughs> A moth to a flame, I should say. But you are being activated. Your your growth, your spirituality is being activated through this person. You might have come together just to activate each other spiritually. This does not have to be you guys are coming together as lovers. But I feel like this person grounds you. I think in all the chaos, even if this person is completely different, in some way you feel like this is some beautiful, big, cosmic important thing you might not know what that thing is but you're like this means something this has merit um the the love has been activated it's not going away it's just growing the curiosity is just growing it's like things are getting stronger here you're putting energy into it whereas maybe in the past you were running from it now you're more like all right well what is this let me let me look at this now whereas before you might have been like fuck this this is too intense i need to run we all get like that. I don't, I'm not saying anything bad. A new earth. It's happening. Keep holding the vision. So you are getting this new start. I think you are walking into a new way of being, a new way of feeling, a new way of loving. I think that you do want a new start with this person. But I think overall in your life, you just want to be loved. 
you want you want what's authentic and real you're seeing the big picture too i think you're walking away from something either for this person or just in general because this this connection whether it's going to be something that takes off or not has made you see what you're in isn't real isn't enough or what you've been doing isn't real maybe you are like a habitual dater or you're just a friends with benefits this person could be making you like all right well maybe I do want a family maybe I do want to slow slow down and if you are already slowed down with someone and you're just bored and there's like no spark this person came in and you're like I I want to have a spark I want to be passionate and this is just kind of dull and lifeless so you're ready to move on and I think, um, I'm not really sure which way you're going yet, but I think you're taking steps, at least acknowledging that something's got to give here. So let's go into, let's see what they're dreaming about. Daydreaming, fantasizing about dreaming at night. This helps me understand somebody's real wants and desires in a situation or perhaps what they're getting caught up on. Um, let's see, your person's dreams, daydreams, thoughts at this time, even fears or concerns. Music. This person is writing a lot of music about you or they're feeling like you're speaking to them through music. They could be speaking to you through music. This person could be a musician. You could be a musician. I see people traveling together, playing music. This person might um, reference that. If you're a musician, they might be traveling with you. Or if they're a musician, um, they could be traveling a lot. Like this could be a complication here. But I think you're a muse when it comes to writing. When it comes to musical expression, if they are in that area, um, you are who they're writing about. I don't know why you need to know that. But Spirit's like, um, we're spilling the tea. They're writing about you. It's about you. It's about you. So I don't know what they're doing. But yes, Collective, it is about you. Um, six, two turns into an eight. So this is, it could be a divine partner. Or this person was just supposed to come into your life maybe to make you write. Um, maybe they're wondering if you're the musician, if something you wrote this person is playing a harp and it's like so I just hear music and I'm I'm thinking but it's not my thoughts is this about me is this for me so I don't know it's like somebody's words or a song or something what are they really saying it's like they're analyzing it. <laughs> but I just feel like anytime a love song comes on the radio this person thinks of you but they see you like if they're fantasizing and they're dreaming, they see you creating things together musically or around music or going to concerts. That could be a, like a, a thing that you guys love to do. Facing the music too, like telling each other your truth. They could be dreaming of coming up to you and being like, I like you. Do you like me too? What the fuck are we doing? Oh my God, Post Malone's playing. I like you. I do. It's <laughs> playing in my head right now. So that could be relevant. It is music. So hey. Flowers in the hair is pulling to me too. It's like blossoming. They they want this to blossom. They want it to grow. Because I feel like there's a stale energy with no communication. They want to know what's good. Collective. Where are we going? What's this? But at the same time, they're not pushing it. Like because we have mountain. They're fantasizing about you two fighting to make this work together. Like you guys climbing the mountain together. Or that they're fantasizing if they put all this work in and they climb this mountain, you're going to be waiting on the other side with their flowers. Like it's all for a purpose. It's all for something greater is what they're thinking and feeling and dreaming about. Like it's going to be work, but look, this person's looking at the mountain and they got the staff in their hand and they're like, all right. I'm willing to climb here, but I think what their fantasy is, is that you're willing to climb the other side too. Maybe you're just looking at the mountain like, fuck that, that seems too hard, I'm out. They want you to look at the mountain like they do, like, all right, it's just a mountain, on the other side it's my person, all I gotta do is get over this mountain, so I'll be there in like 10 minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they want you to attack the mountain instead of run from it. Riding, coming in to save the day, I don't know why. I'm getting this energy of like, somebody wants to be a damsel. Whether it's a man or a woman, they're like, I just want somebody to save me, god damn it. <laughs> or do some kind of like big emotional 
I call these movie moments when they just somebody comes in and does like an emotional display. Serenader Raider. Maybe I always get those vibes. <laughs> Serenader Raider. Still playing with that song, by the way. You still only have one line. Serenader Raider. Nothing. Miss. Never happens. <laughs> um, sweet. Maybe I'm supposed to write it with someone else. Maybe it's a collab. When I find this serenader writer, I'll be like, what's line number two, motherfucker? Been on this line for months. <laughs> Whoa. Too many. I want to see what you're fantasizing about. Travel popped. You might be fantasizing about traveling towards this person, but we'll see if it comes out. Sorry, this reading is so kooky. I don't normally work on full moons for this reason. Suck, Matt, man. I cannot put her back in the box on full moon sometimes. I'm like, oh my god, you guys better stop talking. Don't fuck with me. Don't say that shit. <laughs> Every time someone, like, mouths off to me during the moon, like, in my mind, I'm like, oh my god. Forgive them, God. They know not what they do. Suck, Matt. Sit down. Sit the fuck down. Don't kill them. Oh my god. Sit down. Suck, Matt. Hathor, get, get on this shit. Or I'm gonna go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sekhmet gets her a bad rap. Sekhmet is, like, I don't like the lore of Sekhmet. She's a healer, but she don't take no fucking shit, okay? If you look at Tarot, Sekhmet is like the queen of swords. She can love you, she can embrace you, she can protect you. But if she don't fucking like you, she will cut you like a bad habit and not, not have a... A second remorse about it. She can be cold as fuck, frosty, the biggest fear you'll ever face in your life, or she can love you and scoop you up and you can be like, you can't fuck with me. I got Sekma. You can't get through Sekma. I mean, look at her. She's half lioness, half human. She will fuck your day up. Hathor looks like a goddess, like, you know, Aphrodite and shit. That's why it's like that Mrs. Hyde you know what I mean? Like, I don't like that women don't have a character. Like, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Can we do a female version of that? You know, hello? How about we call it Sekhmet and Hathor? Because that's me in one body. <laughs> All right. But I'm not either of those reincarnated. They're just guides. I am one reincarnated. I'm only going to say one clue. Meow. <laughs> okay, so you're thinking about creating of this person. Creating of this person. Creating art with this person. Oh my god, tongue tied. I think you have a hard time speaking and my face is blushing. Oh my god, why am I blushing? You got a bad for sure. Like, oh, you're sad. This person is like walking art. You're just like, Hubba, hubba, swing, swing. <laughs> Game on. Change. It's like you've been looking, you've been with someone, but there's no art there. And then this person, like, this painting is in the relationship. If For those of you in a relationship, this painting is normally just flat, comp -y, Okay? You're in the museum, boring ocean painting. This person comes into your life and now all of a sudden the painting's got waves and it's coming out at you and you're like, whoa, I'm seeing this art in a whole different way. This person has taken the rose colored glasses and put them back on your face because you didn't think rose colored glasses existed at all. And not only did they put them on your face, but they made you see that you were seeing things so bad. Like, look at how much cooler this painting is with some waves. Like, you're boring. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> this life is boring for you. This person is a walking, like, conundrum to you. You don't understand them. They make no fucking sense to you. But you want everything that they have. You love all of their flaws. They make no fucking sense. You don't care. You want to put it in them or them put it in you. You don't care. You're just like, yes, please wave up my fucking life. My life was fucking boring before you came here. F words flying out my mouth. So, 
that either reference that you got shook up and you're just <laughs> or really scared or you're a swearer too. If you guys could be strangers, you could have met online, so you're dreaming of how you're going to meet, how you're going to come together and make this thing grow. Like, how do I come into your world? How do you come into mine? I think you're fantasizing a lot about that. Money. You might want to be help this person. Um, I'm definitely, lately I've been getting, like, promoter scouting vibes. And if that's not your end of it, they perhaps want to scout you or you're um, seeing ways you could make a lot of money together. Like, not only be lovers, but... Also, that your relationship would continue to be prosperous. It's not just about money. This is about value. Like, you just see the relationship growing and not becoming that flat, boring wave, no wave painting. This, I think you, I think you're a foodie. I think you want to, like, eat with this person, go to restaurants with this person. This person might like sweets. Maybe you're just around, like, a lot of dieters and you're just like, fuck, I would need to go be with this person and we need to just go eat some chocolate. Like, I'm so fucking sick of this boozy. Boozy? <laughs> I've been trying to say bougie and boozy keeps coming out. So I feel like I'm just going to throw this out and it's not going to be relevant for everyone, but I feel like there's an alcoholic problem going on in my collective because I don't drink that much. Like, I had a wine slushie at the fair. One. And that was... I don't know. I had a drink from my fridge that was in there forever. Like, I sporadic drinker. So I do drink. Like, I'm not against it. But there's no reason for me to say boozy. You know what I mean? I keep trying to say bougie and boozy comes out. So I don't know if you're trying to drown someone in a bottle. That could be uh, for you. I feel like spirit's like, mm, take a little step back from the drinking. You're, get, you're getting a little uh, caught up in some bad habits. Bad habits lead to you. There goes Sharon. It's like a Justin Bieber Sharon night, I feel like. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. What's going on currently? What? Do, how can I help you two? Like, what is this spirit? You guys are not together. You've got all this chaos. The rainbow card wanted to pop. We'll see if it comes out. There it is. Blessings. Have hope. Speak your truth. You guys are n needing to. You guys got to talk to each other. You're driving yourselves insane. You're thinking it on your side to death about this. This person's thinking about it on their side, and, but there's no movement. It's like stagnancy. And it's going to continue to be stagnant until somebody says, Hey, I like you. I do. <laughs> Posty again. <laughs> Post Malone is from here, technically. Syracuse. For a little bit, I think. I heard that. So shout out to Posty for being a local. <laughs> uh, renewal. Yeah, there is going to be renewal in this relationship. I do think you guys are going to speak your truth. Because it's just eating you alive. Like, I can't fucking deal with it. This alchemy. This, are they doing spell work on me? Like, why am I so drawn to this person? Like, why can't I stop thinking about them? You actively, both of you, actively try to forget each other. And you literally can't. So, it's to the point where... I just got to fucking see. Like, I, I can't. I can't live this way. The rainbow card. <laughs> it was in my hand. I didn't look. So, yeah. You're going to connect from where you are to where they are. And you're going to find a way. Just have hope. Spirit's leading you there. Have hope. You are a blessing to each other. Even if you guys don't come into anything romantic. This is a major, like... Even if all you ever do is come together and have that conversation, you are woken up. They are woken up. They know what they want, and you know what you want. And you were meant to come into each other's lives to teach each other that. But for majority of you, I don't feel like that's it for you. I feel like this is something deep and meaningful. It could be a twin flame soulmate situation. But let's see. Current energy. What do we need to know for this collective? This is your soulmate. You both feel it. There's a lot of sexual chemistry. You might be having sex dreams or uh, kundalini, kundalini, whatever you want to call it. 
issues. <laughs> um, infinity, yeah, you've had past lives together. You're you're really connecting to that right now. Um, with the eight symbol, you're just you keep seeing on both ends how you're connected, how it always comes back to this person for you, how it always comes back to you for your person because you're soulmates. You're meant to be together. You can't. We ha oh karma, yeah, you're facing karma. You got. You gotta swim away from things. You gotta choose to swim towards each other. And right now, you're just kind of in that stagnant, um, either afraid to leave your comfort zone, or you are getting out of your issues and you just can't come forward because you're not through your karma yet. Or this could be karma from past lives. While it's, why it's so difficult for you two to come together. There's regret here. That's what the karma is. Um, you could have gotten relationships that took you off path, took you into this ego, made you something you're not. It happens to all of us. We have to become bad versions of ourselves to understand what a good version is. You have to love bad people to understand what good love is. So don't beat yourself up too hard here, Collective. But I think there is a lot of regrets here about not saying your truths to each other. And that's, I think, the catalyst to this karma. Like, you guys keep getting slammed with karma, keep getting thrown together in mind because spirit wants you to come together because this is your soulmate. You're not on your life paths when you're not together. Holiday. You could um, be going, it is Labor Day, you could be spending time, but I just feel like you're going to make a decision to go away together. You just want time together. You just want to be able to sit and have this moment to speak your truth and to live in this love. So I either feel like you're going to be a very quiet, secretive couple and not tell anybody and just do your own thing until, you know, karma blows over or just to see if this is something you want to do or you're literally going away because there's a lot of shit and you just don't want it a to affect your relationship and you want to harbor it, harbor it and nurture it with just the two of you. La Nutra. So you could be making a baby on a holiday. Be careful of that. But this is, you want to get away and nurture this. You, you two both just want to nurture this love and there's a lot of like outside crap going on. I feel like a lot of your issues of not coming together is because of outside crap. Karma. Not wanting you two to come together, whether that be family member, life circumstances, career, other lovers. But you are both in the energy of, I want to build this. I want to get this off the ground. I want to nurture this. Neither one of you are running at this point, but there has been no steps. You're just, you're just at that decision of, I want to see where this goes. And you're feeling magic. You feel the sparks from wherever you guys are. It's like undeniable at this point. People can see how you feel about this person. People in their life can see how they feel about you. It's like you guys can, you're being exposed to yourself. And I think people who know you, whether they're for this or not, are sensing whether they know about it or not they're like sensing a change in you so you might be having opposition in your life because anytime you know you change for the better that's when the karmic show their ugly heads like oh we're losing our grip on them or we don't want them to change and elevate and be happy because that means they're going to move past our vibrations and not need us anymore like there's all this low vibrational shit in the way of this let me see what you need to surrender and work on so that you can clear this and just focus on the two of you. <sighs> this popped me. <laughs> Surrender. I mean, it's very fitting for what we're talking about. Surrender to your fear of change. You gotta leave that comfort zone. Leave those boring non-movement wave paintings and go towards the painting that's pulling off the page and coming alive. Somebody makes you feel alive and somebody's very boring and you're just scared to mix it up. You're scared of what people are going to say. You're scared of um, mixing it up and then ending up alone. But if you're feeling the need to mix it up, if you're feeling the need that it, this is just boring and dull, it was not for you. It's not meant to last and either you get out of it on your own or spirit's going to do a forced tower. And trust me when I tell you, you don't want a forced tower. Those are the things that are the hardest to bounce back from. Not that you don't bounce back because you will. You're always meant to bounce back, but 
they're the hardest spanking. So spirit's like, let go of that fear of change and leave your comfort zone of your own accord and we will back you up. Or we're going to pull the rug under your ass because you're not meant to be there with that person and you know it. You're just scared of the unknown. You're scared of rejection. You're scared of um, getting there to express your feelings. But just like anything else, like once you start doing it, it alleviates and then you just keep doing it. You know what I mean? So once you get there and you say those words out of your mouth, you have nothing left to fear. Like you just got to get over the hump, Spirit says. Surrender to your soul's path. Stop living to other people's standards. Like don't follow the leader. You are meant to blaze your own trail. It came out in the beginning of the reading. Don't follow along with someone else's narrative to a book you don't want to be in. If you feel me. Just because you were in the book in the first beginning pages. Or for a few chapters. Doesn't mean you got to stay in that book until the conclusion. You only make yourself a main character in the story that you want to exist in. On the shelf you want to. In, on the shelf in the house you want to exist in. So you're on a bookshelf that you don't want. You're in a book that's fucking boring. And a house you hate. And Spirit says, oh, look, there's a book you want to jump into on a shelf you definitely want to be in and a life that's definitely not ever going to be boring. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Jump libraries. You know what I mean? That's what Spirit is saying. Um, surrender outdated and limited beliefs about yourself. Like, if I'm married, I'm married for life. That's the church's... I fell for that shit, too. Just until recently, you know... Maybe like last year, I was like, no, I get married and that's it. I'm never getting divorced. I will divorce a motherfucker in a second. I will become a fucking queen of swords. I will marry someone tomorrow. And if next week they show their face to me and I see my life as unhappy, I will divorce. Will it be an easy decision? Will I just divorce for anything? Fuck no. But if spirit says to me and shows me all the signs that spirit has shown you, I will fucking listen. And I'll be like, I wish you the best, but I was wrong to marry you because I'm not supposed to die with you. I'm supposed to die with somebody else out here. You're supposed to die with someone and I want you to die with your person. I want, like, you don't have to be a dick about it. And I'm not saying, like, this is going to happen to you and happen to you and happen to you. This could happen to you once. Like, you could be married to someone and, like, maybe you married young and now you're in your 30s and you just don't. You don't connect. Like, you're, you don't like the same things anymore. You don't even have the same friends. You're not even the same people. It's not going to fucking make sense, you know, to stay together because you're not the same people you were when you fell in love. Those people were meant to be in love. Those people loved each other, but you're somebody else. And somebody else is meant to love you, and that's okay. That does not mean you're a failure. It does not mean you disserviced God. You are disservicing God when you ignore his fucking information. When he's telling you, like, this one's a dud. I mean, they're a good person. Don't worry. I'm going to take care of them. But for you, they're a dud. Keep it moving, bro. Sis, like, I got something better for you. Please listen to me. I am God. You know what I mean? If God says in your gut that this divorce is okay, you fucking listen to that. Don't listen to no church. Don't listen to no mouth, whether it comes from your same house, your same family line, or someone you don't even fucking know. Your purpose on this life is to walk your path and to listen to your spiritual guidance and your soul. If you want to get married 18 motherfucking times, you get married 18 motherfucking times. That's your journey, if that's what feels right to you. Fuck anyone who's got to say something about it. Nobody on this earth is supposed to judge you. It's not their place. It's above their fucking pay grade. So if they're sitting there judging you, it's like being at work. And the person right next to you who is the same rank, has no weight, makes the same amount of you. If they said, hey, you need to stay an extra hour and work for me because I'm going home early. What the fuck would you say to that person? Um, you can stay and work your own fucking shift. Also, you can go fuck yourself because you're not my boss. That's how you treat somebody who judges you. The only person that's supposed to judge you, well, is God. And Jesus Christ, okay? Are they those people? Then what the fuck do you care what they think? <laughs> if my opinion offends you, don't fucking accept it. 
Say, Lizzie, shut the fuck up, bro. And I'll be like, all right, my bad. I don't mean to hurt your heart. I have strong-ass motherfucking opinions. Some people have to tell me, like, Lizzie, you're going hard. I'm a, I'm a Republican, you're a Democrat. I'm like, my bad. You know, I don't want to fight with you either. Like, people just spew out the mouth and they don't realize that they're hurting your feelings sometimes. So sometimes setting those boundaries up, hey, you don't live in this house with me. You don't know how I am in this relationship or how they are or what I want in my life. So you're either my friend and you hear me when I'm saying I'm not fucking happy and you support it or you're not my fucking friend and you're just here to kick me when I'm down and also you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm a queen of swords mother. I take no bullshit. I'll straight up. I don't care if you've been my friends for five minutes or you've been my friend for five years. Why do you have some attitude about me leaving this person? Like, why are you so upset if me and so-and-so break up? Like, what's the deal? You're being weird. Like, I will say that fucking shit. I, I don't mince words. This is how the world needs to be. Why are you throwing me shade? You know, I hate those fucking... <laughs> I hate that about people. You know, they say something out loud. Like, you'll be talking to someone and they'll say a side comment. That's very clearly snarky and rude and they they say it in a jesting manner so it's like oh i'm just joking no motherfucker no you're not i'm a hokoya okay don't be saying no snarky i know when someone's joking like i know your intention when you're just trying to laugh i will i'm a comedian i will laugh i will laugh with you if you're just being funny and you're just saying something lighthearted. i know that but when you're really hating me and, and you're saying something just to poke at me, but you don't have the balls to poke at me, but you laugh over it like it's okay to fucking insult someone with a laugh in front of it. No, motherfuckers. No, the fuck it is not. And you have people in your life like this. Don't. Mm -mm. I don't. I don't care if you think it's funny. I don't care if you set it with a laugh. I know that you don't fucking like this or you don't fucking like me. So why don't you keep your fucking comments to yourself? Okay? Because you're not funny. Nobody fucks with me. Because I'll, I'll spit that shit in. What can they say? When they know that they genuinely don't hate me, I called you on your shit. What are you going to say? You got nothing. Because it's truth. You feel it in your gut. You fucking say it. You will scare the shit out of this world. I've been doing it since the day I was born. I'm an expert. Nobody fucks with me. Because I will, I will. Yeah? Okay. Let me tell you what you really just fucking said. You're jealous because blah, 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 or whatever. It has nothing to do with this. You're just putting this on top of this. They just straight walk away every time. I never get a retort back. That's how you know it's truth. Call these motherfuckers out because they're clouding your judgment. Your person might be doing need to do this too. Or be doing this because I'm like, Bleh. this whole... Ever since I sat down, I was like, peaceful as fuck. It's my night off. All of a sudden, I sit down and look. Like, <laughs> Akoya, it's really hard on the full moons. This is why I just kind of walk myself away. <sighs> Let's see. What do I need to help counsel for the near future for this collective? Or how can we help get this communication going? Gratitude. You know when, when you're manifesting or trying to pull in good things, the best thing to do is be thankful of all the good things you have. All the people who are supportive. All of the things like I have food in my belly, I have a roof over my head, I have a job, you know, I have money in the bank. Like These are things to be thankful of. So when you're really overwhelmed and you're struggling, we get sucked into that and so spirit says take a minute <laughs> take a minute and get sucked into all the things that are good and that's going to help calm you down i think it also helps you with your nerves to like if you're nervous about going up and talking to this person think about all of the good things that they've brought into your life and maybe not start out with a love thing but like i just want to let you know like you're a really good friend like you thank you for being in my life like 
that's a very soft approach. So even if someone is mad, they're going to have a very hard time coming at you abrasively when you're coming with at, from a place of gratitude up front. It's like you're diffusing anything right from the get. Like, thank you for meeting with me. Like, I know you're upset. I know I, I, I made all these blunders, but thank you. You know, I really appreciate that you would just come and hear me out. Like, I'm not expecting anything. You know, that softens people too. Acknowledgement. Feelings, yeah. You gotta tell each other your feelings, like, and honor your feelings. You've spent so many hours and days running from this trying to talk yourself out of how you feel for this person this isn't real because it doesn't make sense we're from two different places i'm in i wasn't looking for love and this person came in these feelings are aren't anything i know how to deal with or what to do with they're they're too much the fear became too much but be thankful you know people go their whole life without ever getting shook up like this at all without ever really knowing what love truly is and love is not a honeymoon it's not eyes meeting from across the, it's hard work it you have to make it work every single day and what true love is is when two people wake up every single day and say i'm gonna fight this battle with you this day is our day we're gonna stay we're gonna be together from dawn to dusk by choice because I want you and you want me and all of the shit is just trivial that has to remain that has to remain a hundred percent constantly and that's love I wake up every day with you be by choice because I want to because I choose you that's what love is it's not sex, it's not flowers, it's not trips, it's not Christmas morning, it's not, you know, being the it couple. It's I choose you, I want you every single day. I will fight for you when it's hard, when it's easy. I choose you. That's love every single day. Not sometimes, not sporadically, not when it's good. When things are hard and your first instinct is, I need to get the fuck out of this. That is not love. You do not think that way when it's love. You might get in the moment of, like, I need a break. Like, I need to go. I just want a vacation. I just want to go to a hotel for three days and be away from the, this person because they're driving me nuts. That's healthy. <laughs> okay? I'm not saying. I'm not saying like you need to be together every second. Like if you need two weeks apart, like we've been married for 25 years and I'm going away for two weeks because I just need a minute. Healthy. Okay. <laughs> I mean like literally like I can't fucking stand this relationship anymore. I hate how I feel. I hate fighting. I hate coming home to this. I hate doing this. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want that love has died i don't want to do this anymore love has died what is love i want you i want to do this i want to do this with you every day i want this relationship i want to survive through this argument i want to go to bed with you happy i don't want to do this anymore I don't want to be with you anymore. I don't want to go to sleep with you. I'd rather sleep by myself. Love has died. It's an ebb and flow. Love can come in strong in your life and it can be strong for years. Or it can come in strong in your life and fizzle out. Because it meant, it was meant to show you the difference of that. I choose you every day. I don't want to do this anymore. You needed to learn the difference. Trust me, it took me 15 years to learn that fucking lesson. <laughs> can I have those years back? God damn it. I'd love to. Like, can I just be 20 something again? Great. <laughs> but no. Then I wouldn't, I wouldn't be the strong ass person I am now. And I wouldn't have had my babies even if I lost them. And I wouldn't become a light worker because 
people suffer a lot, especially in like soulmate situations. Like, it's very rare that you meet your soulmate when you're young and you just stay together. It does happen. God bless you out there. You're amazing. You are the light that keeps us all going and searching. We need those couples that are the real deal and like they've been, they were each other's first and then they're married for 50 years. Like, God puts those people on earth to inspire us to touch our hearts and let us see and be like, I want that too. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you might be one of those couples. You might be being pulled to someone to have a real love so that people can see the light. Maybe people in your community need to see that it's okay to be wrong, to marry the wrong person and then remarry someone and it work out fucking fantastic. Like, remarriage is... I mean, there's there's all different kinds of relationships, right? Like, bazillion people divorced and married someone else and they ended up having kids even though they had kids with other people too and they're all friends their kids all play and everyone's like that's awesome you know the two women are friends the two men are two men are friends or two women two whatever you know what i mean like that inspires people like there's all kinds of relationships that have impacts on this earth you could be called answer the call answer the call have real love and inspire others you have to accept this. Stop running from it. Accept your feelings. Accept that the love has died in the situation and that it's time to leave your comfort zone. Okay? You have to accept it. You have to stop holding on to your safety net. Magic is real, but nobody's doing spell work here. Like, you're not being pulled to this person because of spells. You're being pulled to this person because this is your person. <laughs> stop denying it. This person is only going to bring you blessings and you know it. You have blessings coming. Like things are going to get good. You're not going to be punished for walking away from things. I don't care what your society says. I don't care what your church says. I don't care what you were raised believing. It's wrong, okay? Blessings are meant for you. You are deserving of them. Even if you divorce. Even if you fuck up. Even if you were a shitty person, you can be a shitty person and just wake up in a new day and decide to be a good person and actively work every day to be a good person and you will become a good person to the people around you. They will forget that maybe not forever. You're like, there's always going to be a hater. They will forget the shitty version you were because they only have all this good in front of them. It takes time. It takes work. But you can turn it around. You can turn it around. Alright, let's close it out with some tarot. What may happen in this connection? The sun! Yes, you are. This is a good positive omen. The emperor in reverse. Like, you want to be happy, but you haven't stepped up and, and gone after that happiness. You might be dealing with a Leo. Emperor is Aries as well. It doesn't have to be. I just, I've been trying to say the signs more. But you're not standing in your power about your own happiness. So this is change number one. Whether it's love or whatnot, you need to take... Those swords are your energy, okay? All these swords on the ground are people that you don't want anymore. A relationship you don't want anymore. A job you don't want anymore. A friend you don't want anymore. Spirit's like, drop those towers. Say goodbye. Take only the people and things that you want and change your life. It's time for you to make those cuts. Queen, King of Swords energy. The Hermit. This is reflecting on also Virgo. This is the Virgo card. Happy birthday, Virgos. You could also be a Virgo Leo Cusper like me. It ended on the 25th of this month. But these are both the Leo and Virgo cards and the Cuspy season just passed. So you could be a Cusper. I'm a Cusper. Hi, fellow Cusper. Um, but this is reflecting on the relationship, reflecting on what you really want. You could be making a plan. It's, to me, this is like right now, you're seeing what swords you want to drop and what swords you want to take. And you're not taking 
Your emperor isn't upright because you haven't decided just yet who to pick. You want to make this from a practical standpoint. You want to be wise. You want to make the right choice. You don't want to end up in a situation where you feel like you fucked up. Eight of Wands. Uh, you could have to travel towards this person or you're just traveling in general. Um, traveling could be an issue or fast movement is going to come in once you do make a decision. Because we have the Hermit, Five of Swords, like making cuts. Um, you could could have already made those cuts, what, which knocked you off your power. Maybe they made you feel bad and you're just like sitting there healing. You could have ended a relationship. They could have hurt your confidence and you're just sitting here um, healing from that gaining your confidence and once you once you're healed up once you're ready this is you moving quickly justice yeah this could be a libra as well um so you have virgo leo aries libra But there's that fast moving divorce, fast moving communication, coming in for that reconciliation, moving quickly towards this person once or quickly towards this new life. Whatever you're deciding to cut, you're making those cuts, you're sitting for a minute, you're reflecting on what to do next, you're healing, and you're moving quickly to speak your truth here. Justice came up right. It's coming in your favor. Six of Wands. This is recognition. This is a job well done. This is uh, could be promotion. This could be just recognition for um, being doing the right thing or or maybe if you got all the haters like you're giving up too easy or you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that that could be them coming around like you know what I see it now I see you're happier I see I see what you're saying so you could be making up with people that you originally gotten some beef with about this but to me this is like you coming in giving acknowledgement of your feelings to someone as well or someone coming in to acknowledge your feelings um, this could be coming out as a couple, too, or you're going public with a divorce. King of Cups. Okay, so you're, this is a public display of affection. Someone like that serenader raider or that movie moment. So you could be planning. This hermit energy could be somebody making cuts, cleaning up their life, planning a surprise, and when their life is ready, when, when the like divorce goes through or you know maybe they sell their house or they make their travel plans or whatever it is that they're planning in secret when those plannings are done and the healing's done they're moving fast they're coming in with a huge display of affection for someone or just acknowledgement of feelings or just being like i want the whole world to know i love you the, the hanged woman coming out of the stagnant energy. Beautiful. So you're coming in. You're showing your feelings. You're telling your feelings. I see this person forgiving you. I see you guys getting together quickly. This relationship progressing quickly. Not wanting to waste any more time. The wheel of fortune in your favor. This is a whole new world for the both of you. A whole new life. Um, but it all comes from either you got to get out of something so that you can come in and speak your truth or you need to get over your fear so that you can. But once you do, things are going to move fast here. It's going to be undeniable. I don't think that once feelings on both sides have been expressed, I don't think that you can deny this love anymore or or you're just going to know what to do. There's like no need to like sit and wait like we're getting married, we're moving in together, this is what we're doing. Like that sit down could be a, f a quick, we're making a game plan and we're just implementing it. It could be that as well. But turning in your favor, I do see you being very protective of this relationship. I think for a little bit you're going to keep it on the DL. Um, or you're th that energy of don't make jokes. Like don't be snarky about like I don't care if you don't like us together or you're friends with their ex. Like I don't give a fucking shit. Keep your keep your opinions, keep your bullshit on your side of the street. You're, you're not tolerating anyone getting into this new life. Yeah. It's taking that person, taking that life, and just shielding it in your coat. Like, you might have a lot of hater raiders. Yeah, people making it difficult. It could be an ex just 
uh, spreading gossip, not wanting to see you happy with someone else. It could be life circumstances, like this is just really hard. Like it's hard for you to get the resources for you two to come together and move or, you know, something. There's a complication here for our a need for you to stick close together, keep your business to yourself, and, and just have that sword out fighting people. Yeah, you're going to, there's going to be illusions. I think people um, could be at Pisces as well. Uh, I kind of feel like you're going to be surprised, like people you thought were ride or, ride or die are really traitors. But to me, this is also you seeing the truth of, like I said, when people say something when they're joking and they're not really joking, you're going to sense it, you're going to feel it. And yeah, there's going to, you're cutting codependencies. There's going to be people that try to um, make you feel a certain way, try to skew you. Like the literal devil is trying to mess with your perception trying to mess with what you think you want. This is a divine union, I feel like. So their whole their whole but their whole reason for existing is to stop anything holy from taking fruition. Don't fall for it. This is also karmic energy, not wanting to let go, trying to keep the ropes, trying to like paint the picture that they still love them and not your per like they're just being assholes childish vindictive pieces of shit expect that and protect yourself but i see you guys moving forward you guys are moving on you're climbing that mountain you're facing the adversity together you're facing this devil and like do your fucking worst because at the end of the day we're gonna climb this mountain together and we're gonna cross it and we're gonna like stay together after the mountain's done and we whoop your ass like you ain't accomplishing shit little devil <laughs> but you don't you want to right now you would love to give your love offer but you know that you just don't have enough or you guys are keeping this quiet until you know you you can come out as a sturdy couple like maybe a divorce isn't finalized maybe you need to move together um whatever the circumstances are i do see a love cup being offered but a little bit prematurely i don't feel like it's a hindrance with this three of cups you might work um with this person you might fake a work relationship and be secretly dating the outside world doesn't know that you're dating for a minute it could be that as well this could be somebody that you met at work um that you've been thinking about or some kind of work that you've been thinking about giving an offer to for quite some time you could give them a sly offer even though you are playing for keeps with this person. There's this devil energy. There's an, a, a need to elude the devil. So I don't know if you two are coming together and be like, let's just pretend to be working together. Like when everybody goes home at night, we'll turn on the love. Like a need to keep it private for that way. Because just because you don't want anyone in it or because of like an asshole or like court reason. I don't know. I don't really want to like... But, yeah, there's a decision that needs to be made. Um, okay, so <laughs> there's an exchange. So many, so much going on. A choice still needs to be made. you got to make a choice. Are you staying with the one that you don't like anyway, or are you going towards that? First of all, you need to make that choice. What's more prosperous to you? That's what spirit's like. What is going to grow and evolve and be good? Look at it this way. What are you willing to fight for? Are you willing to fight for this karmic and their drama? Or are you willing to fight for the love that you want? Because we have queen of coins. I do see you. This is the earth sign energy. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Virgo came out in the beginning too with the hermit card. But this is like. You'll fight for somebody who's grounded and got their shit together. This is somebody's practical, wise, good parent, logical, mature. And this is somebody a bit younger who who isn't as sturdy maybe about the love. So this person could be a little bit older than you. Um, or you just feel like they're more emotionally mature. But you're still willing to fight for this connection. Because this person is the one that you choose. Aquarius energy as well. Knight of Swords could be Libra, uh, Pisces, wait, <laughs> Libra, Aquarius, <laughs> wait, why am I drawing a blank on the Knight of Swords? 
I think it's Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. It could be all three. Don't quote me on it. I need to research that. I haven't seen you in a while, Knight of Swords. Um, the star. Chosen one, healing. There's going to be healing all the way around. Like this person is could be a healer, could be very healing, but they're going to heal your love, your heart chakra. Because this is right love coming in. This is the love that you choose every day. Exchange of feelings is going to bring in some controversy. And I have a feeling it's to do with your karmic. But it's like you're studying this person, you want to impress this person, and some person wants to impress you. You don't feel like your world's right without this person. You want to come correct. You want to impress them. And you're like, I still need to learn some stuff. Like, I need to know what their favorite foods are. I need to learn this karmic lesson. You could still be learning karmic lessons, which is why you aren't on track just yet. But I do see you working hard. You could be traveling, throwing yourself into career, but you know it's time. Pisces energy. You know it's time to put the focus on making a choice. And I do see you speaking some truth. Making those cuts. And putting energy into the things that you want to put in. I do see you making a choice. And, and as soon as you make that choice and you speak your truth, a peace is going to wash over you because you've been carrying this. And then you're going to move with that fast movement. Put work into a connection. Um, you could work with somebody, like I said, you could be faking that you're just workers. So you could be working all day and then working on your relationship at night. And that's not going to be true for everyone, but it's like putting work into it. Your karmic is going to be better watching you too. Um, but I don't think that's affecting your relationship at all. You're going to have bitter buddies not wanting this abundance. But look at this abundance coming in anyway. They're going to do everything in their power to make it difficult because they're bitter little Bitches. <laughs> but look at you. You're going to have a lot spinning. You're going to have a lot going on. They're going to put a lot on you. They're going to throw stuff. Yeah, they're creating towers. They want you two to break up. Everything in their power to keep you two from being happy and progressing. They're going to cause fights. I think that's the reason why you're pulling your energy back and pretending not to be a couple. And because of it, it's growing. It's growing in your way. No matter what these fuckers do, your relationship is going to continue to flourish because it's the right seed to plant. And this karmic just needs to get the fuck over it because you two are meant to be together and you're going to come together. And you're going to come together as a king of coins. You're going to meet that queen of coins with the king of coins. This is a power couple. This person is going to help, yeah, heal your heart. Help you come out of heartbreak. And in it, you're going to fall in love. This person's going to help you speak your truth, that you've been hurting, that you've been suffering, and that you came towards this empress because you wanted a happy family. You picked the wrong one and you were miserable, and now you have someone that lifts you up. Um, you could get pregnant fast. That could be the controversy that you you get this new person pregnant. It could have uh, broke um, your ex's heart or your um ex got pregnant so now you have to deal with like that on top of starting a new relationship which is going to put some stress on you but the lovers you're taking action with this lovers the one that you do want i don't know why some of you have a baby scandal in the way like you're with your karmic still because they haven't had the baby it's only going to be true. You're waiting for that baby to be born to take some actions. But I don't feel like some of you are going to make a baby fast manifesting this like your spirit babies are manifesting getting you two together so that they can be born. <laughs> take what resonates to you. You either have a baby literally coming or these spirit babies are like as soon as you guys have sex I'm, I'm going in there. I'm going in there. <laughs> and you're going to have me, motherfuckers. <laughs> They're destined. You're going to have me. Okay? I'm going to come right out of your birth can canal. And you're just going to have to deal with it, mom and dad. Look out. Got some powerhouse babies on their way here. Anyway, I love you guys so much. I appreciate you. I hope this was helpful. I'm really sorry about the rant. But I feel like spirit needed, needed that to come out of my body tonight. and And so it is. I love you guys. Toodles. See you next time. Bye. Oh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. 
I say that at the end. Like, why don't I say that at the beginning? Duh. I'm so bad at marketing. (laughs) I'm not a business person. I'm just the reader. I hate this part of it. Like, looking at the analytics and, like, editing videos. (sighs) I just can't wait to the point where I'm successful enough to have a team because... I'm not going to lie, I'm lazy when it comes to editing. Like, I just don't want, I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> like, this is me doing it. That's how I feel about it. Bye, Hula. See you next time.